time for a sound check. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and I've already gone and bumped the camera. All right. So, as far as new stuff goes, I don't have much on my plate yet. Reddit user sent me this beautiful post-1942 Schaefer Triumph Statesman. It is a vacuum filler and it's very clean. It's in good condition. There are some flea bites on the uh, blind cap, but the plunger is frozen. So obviously needs filling system restored. The nib is in excellent shape. There is no masking loss with the platinum masking. It's really the only new thing I got right now that's not mine. Um, Am I kind of quiet? Let's turn that gain up a little bit. Is it any better? Testing. All right. Cool. So, um, I do have quite a few pens that are on the back burner right now. Let me just pan you guys over there so you can see. Take a look at all of these. All these pens that most of them I have to do any work on. Um, there's a couple dip pens scattered through there couple modern pens, a few pens that are fully restored that I just don't have space in my pen case for yet. But those will require some doing. So I'm going to tackle what I can tonight. Try to get my camera back into position. Right about there. Hey, what's up my friend? This is your pen, and we are going to take a look at it. Just tighten these clamps down. I've gone and bumped the camera again. Right about there. Okay. All right. There's also excellent clarity in the uh, striations on this barrel. I can see the plunger rod reflecting light from these lamps. Eight ball won't give it back, I'll give it to him. That's exactly what he'll do. <laughs> Don't give it to Matt either, Matt will sell it. He's like that with Schaefer's. So the plunge is frozen, but it's got a little bit of give to it. I wonder if, yep, a little bit of pressure, it slides out. Now this is one of the wobbly blind caps, so I'm going to have to grab my pen tooling D keys, which are right here, figure out exactly which one I need. I believe I need you. Uh, what are you doing? Oh. I need to move my monitor closer to my workstation. Yeah, I don't give it a ball. At least it's not a Parker 45, because he would be all over that. Oh yeah, this is the right one. God, I'm so happy I bought these. I'm going to use 
is this grippy pad with these spark plug, spark plug pliers to hold the plunger rod in place while I unscrew this end piece here. I think I need another grippy pad for that. The tools? I think those D keys were like 10, pu 10 bucks each. When am I going to have a Parker 45 on stream? Um, I can put a Parker 61 on stream right now. Right here. It's Rainbow Cat Parker 61. I still have yet to take a single look at it. But it is in great shape. It's a Mark 1, so it's got the capillary filler. And If we focus in here, you'll be able to see it's... let me move the lamps closer. It's got some nice tipping material on there. Look at that. How do you clean a capillary filler? Um, over the course of several weeks. You take the pen, take the cap off, you take the barrel off, and you soak it overnight. And then you take a bulb syringe, poke it on this end, flush it, soak it for another night, repeat until the water runs clean. Or you could disassemble it if you're a brave soul. I do not recommend. I cleaned this gray one by disassembling it. This is a Mark II capillary filler. And I fully disassembled it and cleaned it and it was... It was quite an ordeal. Um, there was a lot of heat, prayer, and cursing involved. It's... It makes a snorkel look easy to flush. It almost looks like an extra fine point to me. Matt, you shut your whore mouth. They're clean because I haven't started yet. And most of the other pens that I have working on right now have already been cleaned. How often do we come across Broad Lifetime or Feather Touch nibs? It's not that often, honestly. Um, most are what I would call a fine point or a medium point. Goodbye, 8-Ball. I guess you don't want to hang out with us. You're too good for us. God. Hey, 8-Ball. Check it out. Parker 45. Mmm, look at that. Oh, that's hot. It's a flighter. Look at that. Look at that. Mmm. 
Mm. It's got a medium nib. Mm. Aerometric. Mm. I think he's already gone. Oh, no, he's still here. Yeah, basically, Matt. Okay, well, I'll have, try not to have too much fun. Alright, how am I gonna get you off? Is it gonna be the nib? Probably. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Sorry, I know I'm not in front of the camera right now. I just want to get in close so I can see what I'm doing. Ooh. Hmm. I think I'm going to need heat. I going to get you off. That's exactly what I said. All right. Yeah, that's definitely an extra fine point. What have you posted in the Discord? Why am I being pinged in Discord? with that. How am I going to get you off? Well, it's going to get hot in here. <laughs> All right. Now, as always, you should exercise caution when using heat guns. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. It's the best advice I can give you. Matt, why do you do this? Let's see. Oh, it's not even warm yet. Do I have this turned down? Yes, I do. Yeah, now it's getting hot. Now exercise caution. Don't you don't overheat your pen if you don't want it to be a noodle and for the love of God don't use bowling water Let's see if she wants to move now I would call that a yes. Oh, no, that's just the nib. Well, we can pull the feet out. Unless... Ah, uh, it's old ink gluing it shut. Alright. This is going to need a soak. Oh, 
Uh, that's okay. See? Nips back on. But it's got plenty of old ink in here. I can see it actually clogging the fins of the feed. So I'm going to give it a soak and we're going to wait for it. So I'll be right back. I don't actually have a soaking cup here right now. Two seconds. I couldn't find royalty-free power metal, but I have water now, um, so we're just going to stick that in there, set that aside for a minute, and this nib, as you can see, This is one of the threaded nibs. I don't know how well you can see that actually. Let me pull the lamp over. It is a threaded nib. It just screws on, it screws off. The bane of my existence because when I'm trying to remove the nib unit, usually what happens is I remove the nib. bag number 11 so that I don't lose any of the parts that's what I like to do that is a touchdown tuck away in bag number three it's awaiting this uh, awaiting reassembly I already have the sack cut and everything. I just ran out of time last time. I'll probably put that together tonight. It can be. If you've got the right tool for the job, then it makes it a lot easier. This is what I like to use. This is a great tip for pulling the o-ring out. And this is a great hook for seating the o-ring in place. Works great. Oh no, it gets the full thing. It gets the whole damn thing.
now after a little soak, the feed comes right out. Ta-da! So now, we got some uh, ink droplets coming out of here. Take a look. I might be. I'm in several fountain pen Discord servers. that one. I posted in hashtag promotional. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm technically in nine different servers related to fountain pens. Well, one of them's a shit post server, but yeah, that's the one Yas is a mod in. Yeah, I used to be called Valthro in there, and then Yas changed my name, and I just left it. Is that the one I'm looking for? Yep. I need to do this a little bit away from the camera so that I can swing my mallet. <laughs> blocking me there. It doesn't help that the nib unit didn't want to screw out of here. I think what I'm going to have to do is apply more heat and try a little trick I picked up. Let's get that ink off of this. Oh, who's messaging me? There. Alright. I'm going to try something that is the method for removing jewels from Parker caps. If any of you are familiar with Parker pen repair, you already know what I'm talking about. I'm going to heat this up, and I'm going to get one of my grippy pads, and I'm going to press down hard on it and twist the pen, and hopefully the cap, or the, um, the grippy pad is grippy enough to hold the nib unit in place while I tw untwist the pen around it. That's not hot enough.
This is also how you get really dry, cracked fingers. This is also how your rum gets really, really hot. Hey, I recognize you. You, de you DM'd me like two hours ago. You can if you like. I only charge 25 for someone's first vac they send me. Alright, let's give this a shot. You never know. Let's see, that way, so we want to twist the pen this way. I think. Ooh, that is shellac in there. That's why it didn't want to come out. I got it started though. Let's go the other way. The other way again. And more heat. I really have no idea if this is working, it's just a hunch. Matt, you shut your whore mouth. Bane of my existence. John McCain kicked the bucket? Okay, we don't care about that here. We care about pens. It's a good thing you didn't watch me try to fix... Well, not try. I successfully fixed Matt's pens. But... Uh, I had to do some experimental... Uh, experimental procedures. Let's double this up. Ah, don't apologize. It's be a lot easier if I do this. Get that plunger out of the way. And we go the other way. Matt, why? Oof. There's a snorkel set two miles from my house. 180. Unrestored. It's crazy. <laughs> Matt, please. Alright, I don't think this is actually doing anything. That's the one I'm looking for. You hear that? Technically, it's making seal now. That's hilarious. But it's not a pop like it should be. Let me show you what it should sound like. Uh, How about, I think I remember this one being easy to take apart. Nope, that's a cartridge. This one. Where did I put the...
Hear that pop? That's what it should sound like. That's what we're going to make it sound like. Just have to have a good long think about how I'm going to do it. Because the number one tool in your arsenal is patience. Patience is how you solve your problems. If you rush, you will destroy a pen. Hmm, if only they hadn't put shellac in there. Bane of my existence. All right. Let's try this. The funny thing is, the the O-ring looks whole, but I know it's not making a good seal. Usually when I go to an antique shop, I go looking for pens and I end up buying something weird like a 1980s VW business card holder. Gave that to a buddy of mine who has a Jetta TDI. He appreciated it. And that was Discord again. Who pinged me, I wonder? Let's find out. Y'all interrupting my stream. Oh, it was Brownie starting VC party. Okay. I guess that's fine. Let's try this.
Talk shit, you get hit. That's how the world works, my friend. Hmm. The thing that makes this so difficult is... Look at the surface area I have to work with. That lip, the transparent lip, with the whole two threads, is the visible part of the nib unit. This here, that's the section. This right here right at the end there. That's a nib unit. I need to get that out. Or I need to work from inside the pen. I don't think I have the tools for that. Might be able to reach it with this. No, no wise ideas are coming to mind. Because I believe the nib unit is actually blocking the plunger. So I cannot actually knock it out. I think. Yeah. Another option would be knocking out the packing unit. That is an option we can try. Where's my punch at? Okay. Somewhere up here on this messy desk, I have a hollow punch that I can use. Probably in my drawer, which means it'll take me a minute to find it. Ooh, I could use that. Let's give this a shot. Ah, oh, it won't fit. Ha <laughs> ha! Because the nibudit's in there. It's unfortunate. The search continues. I require some form of organization. Will this fit? 
Technically, yes. Now, Schaefer had two types of packing units in their vacuum fill pens. The first were friction fit and secured with shellac. The second type were threaded. And if this is the second type, it just ain't gonna budge. So, I'll apply some light heat. If there's shellac there, if it is friction fit, then I should be able to knock it out. And then just return it back in place once I'm done working on the packing unit itself. It will also make drilling out the packing materials and solvent welding the new ones in place very much easier. It is a process that I've done for this pen, which is awaiting final reassembly. A little bit more. It's almost there. Let's try that. I don't think it's hot enough, but I want to overheat it. Nope. I'm going to give it one more shot and then just concede that it's a threaded packing unit. Because they don't want to budge. Just a wee bit more. Try it one more time. Nope. And I'm not going to force the issue. What a beautifully stubborn pen. Hmm. Oh, would you look at that? My tapping has dislodged the O ring. See if I can grab that. I need three hands. There's half of it.
The other half appears to still be on the plunger rod. And the plunger rod now goes further. So perhaps it's just the O-ring clogging the plunger rod. Oh, is that how Doggo got his Super 500 open? this light dying? I just got it. Hit it against the table. Hey, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yeah, the rest of the o-ring is still on the plunger rod. try something different. It is worth noting that this pen does have the 1000 price code stamped on the side, which means that in the mid 40s it originally sold for $10 even. that's hot enough but let's try it. I knew I didn't cut my fingernails today for a reason. And that is just cutting the pad. Let's get it hotter. I'm gonna be critical. I do apologize for the flickering. My uh, one of my lamps does that when I use my heat gun. Doesn't like it.
not quite. I think that's hot enough. I have no idea if this is actually going to work. Because I have such little surface area to work with. It's not budging. Well, that's annoying. That's all right. Once more into the breach. I'm going to reinsert the feed. And we're going to try to remove the section. Now the section is friction fit. But it is a very tight fit and it is shellacked in place. 
Removal of the section is very difficult, but I feel right now it is my best option. So before I even attempt to remove it, I'm going to bring it up to heat and I'm going to go on and off with the heat gun trying to maintain the heat let the shellac soften gradually goodness have I been working on this pen for an hour that's crazy. Now the reason I reinserted the feed is because as I will be trying to remove the section, my fingers will be applying some pressure to two parts of this section. And with the feed inside, there's much less of a chance of it cracking. Give it some support on the inside so that you don't squeeze it. down a little bit then I'll apply the heat gun again because I want to keep that shellac hot already mostly it's all already what I would call cooler than shellac melting temperatures so back up we go go for one more tempering cycle if you will give that about a minute heat it back up and I think I'm going to give it a shot
Back to the heat. Oh, that's quite all right. It gives me something to do. I really wish Francis was still in the uh, tool making business because he did make a nib unit bushing extractor tool. It would make this much easier. Indeed. Every stream, there's at least one. Usually more if Matt sends me his. Bringing it up to critical temperature now. Almost there. I think that'll do. I'm not going to use any tools for this one, just finger pressure. Let's see if we can get her get her out of there. Nothing yet. So far I'm just turning the feed. Hmm. Perhaps, unless that was the feed. Nope, oh, I'm still just turning the feed. I think I'm going to have to apply more heat. If I shine my light, let's get nice and close up here. You can see, hopefully, you can see through the clear striation where the plastic of the section ends. And it's right below that lip. Can you see right there? Now these ridges in the section do not make it easy to grasp. So the section goes down to about there. 
and it's friction fit. So, ideally, we should be able to heat it up, get a grip on it, and apply slight twisting as we pull straight outwards. Alright. Let's wrap that around there. Wrap this around here. And gently, gently try to separate them. forgot to put the feet in. Now we get to hear the feed creak as it turns. Nada. I wish I had a way to accurately regulate the temperature of water because I would keep it at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, soak it for an hour or so, that would guarantee loosening shellac. are getting sweaty, it's hot in here. Almost back up to temperature. This one around the barrel. This one around the section. Give it a little torque. Just, just for giggles. Let me see if I can get a better grip pulling with this. 
I don't think so. Nope, it's just sliding right off. Hmm. You did send me a difficult pen, didn't you? This is fun. I enjoy a challenge. What am I gonna do about this pen? need a wave. I need a lid so I can just start recreating Francis's tools. That would make things much easier. Well, I'm going to say, since this pen is being difficult, I am going to, for now, set it aside and see if I have any bright ideas in the meantime.
So we'll just drop these in here, bag number 11, because I don't want to force anything. I don't want to break your pen. I have some pens I've been working on that have been on my workbench for a month due to things such as not wanting to open. But rest assured, I will get it done. I'm a man of my word. So... Let's see. I might as well put this tuck away back together. Talc, some silicone grease, and shellac. And possibly some shirt thread sealant. I'm going to need my sack spreaders. And I believe that's all. I've already, I've already measured and cut this sack to length. Let's just do a dry fit to double check. It's actually a bit short. Hmm, that's why. Had something in there. Yep, it's the right length. I'm just going crazy. This thing is the bane of my existence. These are so easy to lose. So, get our shellac. Okay. It's just not my day, is it? Shellac defeats me at every turn. Must open now. Yep. Okay. I'm going to mount the sack on my sack spreader. Get that ready. And now I will apply a small amount of shellac to the section nipple. Just paint it on there. Actually, need a little bit more than that. There we go. And before that dries out, I take my sack spreaders, I spread my sack, and I poke it in there. 
carefully. There we go. That is one sack on an open nib touchdown tuck away. Just make sure it's on there straight. put this o-ring in the barrel. First what I'm going to do is lube it up. If you add a bit of silicone grease to your o-ring before placing it in the barrel, it will make a better seal. So I just kind of give it a bath in this shit. Pull it out. Get another toothpick. Remove the excess. And there's a lot of excess. Yeah, I wonder who that could be. I bet it was Matt's phone going off. Totally. Was it Discord? Sure looks like Discord. Someone sent me an email link. There we go. All right. So I've taken off everything I can with the toothpicks. Now I use my fingers. And that is one new depot ring. Took a lot longer than it should have. I'm just going to poke it in here. Grab my hook tool. But I can do this so you folks can see it too. Let's just do that. Where's the camera? Hello.
It's so difficult to keep it in frame and in the light. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Well, it's in there now. Actually, I can just do this. O-ring is in place. So, with that fully seated, I can poke in this through here, drop in the screw, grab my trusty screwdriver, poke it all the way through. that infernal thing on there. I'm not going to use the sealant on the blind cap. There we go. And it's all lubed up. I'm good to go. You can check the seal without reassembling by just pushing, placing your finger over the end of the barrel. You can probably hear it. Is making a good seal. I can feel the suction too. So now really all that's left to do on this is to wait for the shellac to set, talc, the sack, put the shroud over the sack, screw everything back into place. It'll be all she wrote. Is this closed tight? Sure is. And that's how easy a touchdown is. It's a sack pen with an O-ring. <sighs> what else do I have here? I've got a green open nib tucky touchdown. That needs work. Unfortunately, I cannot give Hon 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 Baguette a run for his money when it comes to tuckaways. I do not have as many as he does. I don't believe I've cut a sack for this one yet. I think there was an issue with this one. Was it a cracked cap? Yeah, that is a crack. Which bag was that? Bag number four. Alright. So it is unfortunate, but the cap is cracked. If we look right about there, get some light in here for you. Right there is the beginnings of a stress crack. I 
Where's my? S yeah, these are my 15s. 15 and a half thin is the set proper sack size for most tuckaways. This is not most tuckaways. I need a 17 and a half by a 178 snacked. Do I have any of those? That is a question. left. Now this is going to have to be trimmed because that is way too much sack right there. Do I have any sacrificial cardboard lying around here? I do. Hello, sacrificial cardboard. Now here's how I like to measure a sack. We need to cut this much off. And I am cutting hand right dominant, so that was a dumb way to do it. I'm going to cut a little bit big. I don't like to make a sawing motion because that will twist your sack and you end up stabbing it. I like to just push down and kind of rock it back and forth. If you've got a nice sharp exacto knife, a few seconds of this will create a very clean cut. Will do. I will PM you later tonight. I'm going to give it one more go before I sign off for the night. Um, I just bumped the camera with my face. But I will let you know my thoughts and possible solutions that I am considering. Looks about right. Hey, that's perfect. Goodbye, sacrificial cardboard. I hope you enjoy your night, my friend. If this here is the same type of pen, with the same cap band, with the same clip, with the same filling system, it is a 1949 Schaefer Tuckaway Statesman. It's 1949 because that is the year that they created, it's really the only, I think it's 49 and 50 that they did the fat touchdowns and after that was the touchdown thin model pens 
It was also around this time that they went to polystyrene plastics. For example, this is a carmine wideband valiant tuck away. It is a vacuum filler. This one, the blind knob is very tight on it because I haven't used it in a while. This one was restored for me by Jerry Berg. And he did a hell of a job. This one's a vacuum filler. I don't know if I've got another touchdown. That's a vac. That's not a tucky, that's a vac. That's a lever filler. And that's a vac. So these are these two pens, the blue one and the green one, are my only touchdown tuckaways. Yours is burgundy. Ooh, that's a very attractive color. I'm a big fan of the blues and the browns. Yeah, I don't think I have... Well, I do have burgundy pens. This is a burgundy touchdown filler, but it is a craftsman with the 33 nib. This one's stiff as well. And here's another touchdown filling Burgundy Schaefer. This is one of their tip dip pens. I don't recall exactly what this is called. Two seconds. It is the Tip Dip Craftsman, which is amusing because this is a Schaefer Craftsman, and this also is a Schaefer Craftsman. I believe there are five different Craftsman pens that Schaefer released throughout the years. They really liked reusing names. But yeah, the tuckaways are very attractive. Um, I do love tuckaways. One of my favorite that I have, I got from Jeff Powers. This is not the pen. Hang on. This one. This is a Schaefer Sentinel tuckaway. The white dot is on the blind cap um, because at the time they were having issues mounting the white dot on metal caps. They only figured that out in... let me think, when was it? Oh, I'd have to check my sources and I'm far too lazy to do that. So just look at the attractive... Uh, look at the attractive squiggly lines on the cap. Aren't that nice? But most tuckaways you find will have the conical triumph nibs. And most tuckaways you find will be vacuum fill pens. Now the first year Schaefer tuckaway is completely different. It is a lever filler. It was modeled after a women's tube of lipstick. It is an open nib model. The white dot is mounted to the barrel and it has a threaded butt, uh, threaded butt for easy posting. And these did not sell at all so they updated what the tuck away was.
to what we know it is today. I really do enjoy the history behind these puns, and I love sharing it, so please bear with me. So, I need to select this sack. Try not to get these mixed up. Yeah, I don't think there are any touchdown tuckaways with the Triumph Nib. I don't th think there are any. Now, I believe there are vacuum fill ones with open nibs, but I might be mistaken. this on the first try. Nope. I went and jinxed myself. Get some fresh shellac on there. Try it again. These are slightly annoying to do because they have such a tiny section nipple. There we go. Now it's on there. Make sure it's straight. It is straight as an arrow. Oh, I've already put the o-ring in this one. Excellent. I'll just get some fresh silicone grease. Shove that through there. Drop the screw in. Put the nut over the screw and fit the blind cap. Why doesn't it want to go? There we go. Okay, that one's in place. It does make a proper seal. So that is two touchdown tuckaways, almost complete. Close up my shellac again before I spill it all over myself again. That has happened. It's not fun. It ruined a pair of jeans. And a shirt. What else do I have in these bags? I'm getting things done today. It feels good. I've got a bunch of snorkels that I don't have point seals for. Let's see, which one was this? Seven. Let me check my notes on seven. Oh yeah. I need a new blind cap for this one. Now, number two. Number two came to me in the most peculiar condition. It didn't have a plunger rod. 
so I need to uh, <laughs> I need to find one. I've got plenty spare. It's just a matter of getting off my ass and sizing one out because I have an enormous bag of spare Schaefer parts. Yep, there's your problem. It won't fill if the sack is hard. What else? Let's see, this half balance has a cracked nib. Number five. I don't remember what's wrong with that one. And this one has a cracked cap. So, I believe it's time to give Yukon's pen another go. I'm just going to put these up here. going to do about you? I wonder. If I had a method to unscrew... Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's zoom in again. If I had a method to unscrew this nut that is at the end of the plunger rod, then I think I would be able to pull it out through the back. I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to show you guys. I could kind of see it in there. Kind of. Maybe. Sort of. Not really. Zoom out a little bit. I think I'll be able to show you. It's in there. You'll have to take my word for it. But if I had some way to unscrew that, I would be able to simply pull the plunger rod out from the back. But then that raises the issue of my drill bits, which I will be using to drill out the packing material, won't fit through the nib unit. So I need to remove either the nib unit or this section. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to. But let's give it another try. Well, that one was Instagram, and that's Instagram again. By the way, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I wouldn't be upset. Sack pens are really easy, and generally easy. I feel like a lot of restore people, restore folks, restoration masters, I feel like they kind of overcharge for them. But that's just my opinion. I am a cheap bastard. Yeah, this is a problem pen. Oh, hey, Matt. Oh, you totally missed me taking a break. I actually restored two tuckaways. Well, 
most of the work was already done. I just shellacked the sack and screwed in the blind cap. This is a lot more fun to do in the winter because then you're happy that your room is getting hot. do its little normalizing cycle thing. In the meantime, I don't think I've showed this one off on stream. This is a Japanese mechanical pencil. And it's got lead. You can write with it. And if you smoke, There we go. If you smoke, it's a lighter. It's a fucking flamethrower is what it is. Check this out. Let's pan up a little bit. So you can see the height of the flame. Here we go. Look at that. It's a fucking blowtorch. Look at that. Look at the height of that flame. Crazy. So that one took me a couple weeks to restore because I had to order in special supplies for it, obviously. I put Zippo wicks in it. I put a Zippo flint in it. And I put Zippo lighter fluid in it. Because I figure Zippo probably knows what they're doing. What makes this even better is this is a celluloid barrel. You don't want to get fire near celluloid because it will go up in flames very, very quickly. I personally find it hilarious. If only it didn't take like 20 strikes to get it lit, it'd be perfect. I would probably date that pencil at the uh, mid-30s, early 40s. <laughs> Are you grinding nibs? It's okay, I've been torturing my stream with a heat gun for two hours. And if you look close, you can see the lamp flickering. Oh. Well, you certainly have enough.
Alright, the time has come. Let's put the feed in for stability. Grab, not the bag. Grab this. Let's try this again. Let's just give it a good tug. Absolutely nothing. That means we go back to the heat. How many people are still watching? There's still a few of you. That's awesome. Thanks for hanging around. Bounty left though, filthy casual. Now, by the way, if you want to get into a good Discord server, I'm going to drop an invite link when this fails. That was Instagram again. Who's trying to message me? Maybe I should figure that out, too. Alright, let's give it a tug. Goodness, that clutch ring gets hot. Nope. I guess I'll give it its normalizing cycle while I do this. Bam! Discord link. All right, my friend, I will see you next time. Thick Boy has joined the Discord. I wonder who that is. Welcome, Thick Boy. Please follow the rules so I don't get banned. <laughs> Back to the heat.
Let's give it a shot. I think I'm just going to leave this pen until next time. I'm sure I'll think of something. Take the feed back out. Take a close look. I need to contact someone with a lathe. Maybe I can have Max make me up some tools. I wonder if Francis would be willing to give me his original measurements. do I have that I haven't even touched yet? Let's see. Let's see. What have I? What have I in the tray? Take a look at this Rainbow Cat Parker 61. Take the cap off. Take the barrel off. Put it in water. Okay, what's next? With flat ends. Ooh. This is one that I got in recently. Haven't touched yet. The nib. It's very scratchy. It looks like it took a tumble. It's a little bit misaligned. But it is a very soft, even call it semi flex nib. So, let's take it apart. As always, first I'm going to try it without heat. Because usually these pens just comes right out. Just like that. Now before I even look at the sack, I want to know the condition of the J bar. The J bar is nice and reflective and shiny and doesn't show a speck of rust. God, I love it when I'm right.
suppose I should put Yukon's pen back in the bag. Which bag did I decide it was going in? I don't care. I'll put it in four. Now I won't lose the parts. That would be very awkward. Alright, so this sack is actually pliable. But I don't trust it. I see some weirdness on it. there. I have absolutely no idea what that is. It doesn't appear to be a hole in it, but I don't trust it. So I will replace it. And it was way too easy to take that off. So... Let's see. How do I want to fix this nib? Just gonna put this. Uh oh. There we go. Put that back in there temporarily. Put it deeper in there temporarily. There we go. I'm thinking I may. Go ahead and yeah, this nib is actually sprung. It's not laying flat on the feed. I might just send it out to Daniel Smith or something. But god, this is a very attractive finish. I love this gray marble. My favorite finishes I find on Schaefer Juniors. Take for example this ebonized pearl. This is a Schaefer Jr. I got from Matt as payment for fixing some of his pens. And it's beautiful. It also, however, requires some work for the nib. Because it hard starts and it skips and it's also a soft nib. I actually have ink in this one. There we go. It handles fast writing perfectly fine, but it hard starts. So at some point I'm going to ship it out. Oh, I put the wrong cap on it, and it fit. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Here's the correct cap. rather the section I'll leave nib removal to the nib meister is that a crack of the feed? no it's just a machine mark oh I think that is a crack I'll be damned wait a second No, I don't think that is a crack. I'm not going to put a sack on this one yet, just in case the nibmeister would like to knock the nib out. So that's one that'll be sent off for nib work. What else?
else do I have on the table? A lot of pens I've bought lately have been restored. I'm losing track of which ones I have to work on. How about this one? Oh, that one's good. Here's an oddity that I found on eBay. You've got shirt clip, white dot, gold cap, but it is a stub steel dunce nib. This is a Franken pen. Schaefer would not have sold a steel nib with a gold cap, not to my knowledge. And my knowledge is not perfect, but gold caps don't go with steel nibs. So I've been trying to figure out for several weeks now exactly what it is. What else do I have over here? Here's an attractive little no-name lever filler I picked up. The nib says do write pen made in USA. So I guess it does have a name on it. The steel nib, the gold plating is almost completely gone. Do write pen made in USA. Tipping. Whoops. Where's the focal point? There we go. The tipping looks to be in good condition. And the cap does have a crack which appears to be stabilized by the cap band, thankfully. But this material is very attractive. Absolutely beautiful. I'm sure this was a lady's pen. Just the way it catches and plays in the light. So I haven't tried taking this one apart yet. It also has a translucent section on the section that I believe is supposed to act as a sort of ink window. Oh boy. I think I'm gonna need heat. Oh yeah. This is gonna need heat. Having little or surface area, this one is heating up faster than the Triumph. It is a very thin pen. I will show a girth comparison here in a minute.
It's a very stubborn one that does not want to come out. I don't know if I would sell this one. I really do love the celluloid. I typically sell my third tier pens, but this one's very nice. That's more like it. Let's get the gripper on it. And give it a twist. Aha! Turns out it's not threaded. Oh, boy, does that stink. That's a very thin barrel wall. It is a friction fit section and the sack is done for. Absolutely done for. Wow, there's virtually no sack in there. It's all crumbled. And it's all behind the damn J-bar. Just shake it till it stops rattling. Work the J-bar, shake it again. Stops rattling, work the J-bar. Shake it again. I think that might be all of it. I wonder what happened to the rest of the sack. This must take a very thin sack. All right, who do I want to help me take this out today? How about you? Just chip away the old sack. It'll come off in chunks. And those chunks will fly absolutely everywhere. But that's okay. I don't do this because I enjoy being clean. That one bounced off my face. This one's going to require a soak, definitely. So many tiny little sack shards on there that are being very stubborn.
When you soak them, they soften. And it's a lot easier to pick the little pieces off. The big pieces still want to stick, hence why I'm picking away at it. Now there's one thing that I'm curious about. It's actually fairly smooth. Very slightly bouncy. Alright, well, I'm going to take our glass that our Parker 61 is currently steeping in. You can see some ink is coming out of that end. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna share the glass. There we go. Turns out the do right pen had black ink in it. Who knew? Goodness, this area has become messy. Alright, what's next? I love blue ink. I own 31 different inks, and the majority of them are blue. Here's a script cert of Schaefer Lady script cert 12. The clutch ring on this one is loose. I'm gonna have to uh, gonna have to uh, fix that. But it actually really doesn't require any other work. Like it came to me with a cartridge installed, and the ink in the cartridge. It actually has an agitator in it, and it flows very nicely. And the pen writes. It is a very scratchy nib, so I'm going to have to uh, deal with that, but it doesn't really require restoration. Kanpeki is nice. I don't like putting Iroshizuku inks in sack pens, however. Um, Kanpeki is probably fine, but some Iroshizuku inks have been known to eat sacks. Um, some diamine inks as well. I've heard rumors of diamine denim, but I've never had problems with it. I pretty much just stick to Parker Quink Blue Black and Schaefer Script Blue Black these days because 99% of the pens that I use are SAC pens. For my vacuum fill pens, um, sometimes I'll use something a little different, like Pelkin Elstein Aquamarine, um, Marzin Athena Eternal Blue is pretty good and I found it to be pretty safe. And I think Kunpeki is fine for vac fillers. So I like using that one as well. I'm not brave enough to put my Tsukio in a sack pen or a vacuum fill. That's pretty much reserved for cartridge converters.
Just for giggles, I've been trying to tune this skyline myself. Um, I haven't written with it for a few days, so it has some dried ink sheening on the feed, which is actually creating several different colors, oranges and greens. Look at that. This one is glassy smooth, but it hard starts. It literally does not start. Granted, this is several days since the last time I've written with it, but it doesn't like to start, even if I haven't written with it for five minutes. So. Maybe that primed the. Nope. Uh, I'm just going to dip the nip to prime it. If I can't get this one figured out, I might send it off to Dan Smith or someone. But it is a full flex, ever sharp skyline, and I would very much like to be able to write with it reliably. And I've, I have a ton more pens with tiny, tiny issues like that that I need to ship out for work. Um, this Conklin Crescent, it's got a tiny little crack in the nib. I need to ship that off to, ah, uh, what the heck is his name? Greg Minuskin, that's it. You might be able to see the crack. It's to the left of the crescent moon. I don't know. You can almost see it. Kinda, maybe. That shouldn't be terribly expensive. I could probably source a new nib, but I would rather just keep the original. I've got a few nibs for him to weld. I need to ship those out. I've been lazy. Oh. The shellac on these should have set by now. Yep. So, let's see. I don't need silicone grease anymore, so I can throw these toothpicks away. Now, I dust the sacks with talcum powder and reassemble.
You don't want to lay it on too thick. Just a light coating will do. Just like that. And one more. I'll be excited to have these up and running. Wonder how many tuckaways I have now. Just like that. One tuck away. And two tuck aways. That's a tight blind cap. What the heck? There we go. Doesn't make as loud of a hiss. I wonder why. I wonder if there's silicone grease blocking the breather hole. It's a muscle, much lighter hiss now. Oh yeah, that's what it was. One thing I find amusing is these tuckaways are identical. Yet one has a larger nib. quite a size difference to those nibs. One is longer and fatter. It's worth noting that the smaller nib is unserialized. That means the blue tuck away came first. Probably a 1949 model. 1950, I would guess, at for the green tuck away.
is a pity about the crack in the cap. Well then, I have been streaming for nearly three hours. I think it is time to take a break and get some food. Time to start putting the tools away. Thank you everyone who stayed this long. I appreciate you more than you can know. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your company. If you ever have a question relating to pens in general, drop me a line. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm on Reddit. I'm on Discord. Please feel free to ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question, only stupid answers. I am here to give you stupid answers. Yes, it has been fun. I enjoy these streams. Even though I didn't get much done today, it was very enjoyable. I enjoyed myself. I hope you enjoyed yourself. All that's left now is to wash my hands. Enjoy your weekend, my friends. Have a good night. <laughs>